All right, I want to talk about a few basic properties of inverse functions, <clears throat> and I'm not going to get into too much detail about them, but just some of the properties that we need in order to um, find the derivative of an inverse function, which we'll talk about right after this. So, um, one thing that happens with uh, inverse functions, a property that is met, let's, let's call our inverse function we're dealing with um, f of x and g of x. So if f and g are inverse functions of one another, it's true that f of g of x is equal to x, and also that g of f of x is equal to x. Okay? So let's just, for example, let's, let's look at, uh, say we said f of x is x squared and g of x is square root of x, two functions that are inverses of one another, okay, on the interval from zero uh, to infinity. So if, if they are inverse functions, they should meet this criteria right here. So let's just check and make sure. So f of g of x, that means you take g of x and put it into f of x. So take g of x, square root of x, and put it in to, uh, for x in the function f of x here. So um, f of g of x would be equal to, take square root of x, put it in for x in there, so it would be square root of x squared, which square root of x squared is equal to x. So this is met right here. Let's check this one. g of f of x. For this one, we're going to take f of x and put it in to x where we see, uh, in, in the function g of x where we see x. So it's going to be square root of x squared. And square root of x squared is just equal to x. So, yeah, it does, uh, you know, meet this first criteria here. So, so far, we're, we're looking good. Okay? Um, <clears throat> another thing that happens with inverse functions is that um, if, so, if on the graph of f you have the point a comma b, that means that on the graph of g you have the point b comma a. Okay? So <clears throat> your domain and range are basically kind of switched uh, in, in a sense for your two functions. So let's just look here, for example. Let's look at a few points that are on f of x. So let's say the point 2 comma 4. Right? So, because if I take 2 and I plug it in, it just becomes 2 squared is 4. Or the point uh, 5, comma, 25 is another point that's on f of x. So on g of x, the kind of this, you know, opposite of those, I guess, should be there, right? So, um, so 4, if I take 4 and I plug it in, square root of 4 is equal to 2. So notice here, f of x has a point 2, 4, g of x then has a point 4, comma, 2. So if I take 25 and plug it in, um, for x, square root of 25 is equal to 5. So, same thing is true. So, and if you did that with any point, um, you know, again, you have to go, only go from 0 to infinity since square root of x um, doesn't, you know, you can't have any negative x values in there. But, um, you know, so anyways, that, these set of functions meet this criteria as well. So, definitely looks like f and g here are um, inverse functions of one another. Uh, another thing that happens um, <coughs> is that, uh, Inverse functions are um, mirror images of each other across the line y equals x. So I'm just going to draw that out. This isn't necessarily going to help us with our derivative thing, but just thought I'd mention it. So y equals x squared, if I just start from 0 and go out, looks something kind of like that. Square root of x, if I start here, looks like this. So you can see along the line y equals x, okay, these are mirror images of one another, okay? So another thing that is true of inverse functions. So when we're talking about the derivatives of inverse functions, we're definitely going to have to use both of these to help us out in just a moment here.